the line. Hi, global supply chainers. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for those that are far away from here. We have students from more than 180 countries, which is very, very exciting. So welcome to this fourth Hangout event. My name is Eva Ponce. I'm the executive director of the MicroMaster program in supply chain management. And we are very lucky to have today with us Dr. Josue Velázquez. Dr. Velázquez, he, he is the director of the Latin American Global Network Scale, and he's also a research associate here at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. He has prepared the screen game. This mm -hmm. is an innovative um, role-playing game, an interactive tool that uh, I hope you have enjoyed to play the game. And he has also prepared for today a debrief in order to discuss with you the conclusions and to highlight the main results of, of this game. So thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Velázquez, to be with us today and to prepare this material for our SCX students. We are approaching the end of SC3X. So I know you are working hard. Um, you just need one last push, the final stretch, and take the final exam, and then you are going to be done with SC3X. So please, keep up the good work. Um, today, in addition to have Dr. Velázquez, uh, that he's going, as I mentioned before, he's going to discuss the first 15 minutes, the, the debrief of the screen game, uh, we are going to have uh, Professor Sheffy. Professor Sheffy is the director of the Center for Transportation and Logistics, and he's an expert in risk and resilience. He has been working in supply chain management during the last 40 years. So I think it's a great opportunity and an honor for us to have him today in this Hangout and to give you the opportunity to discuss with Professor Sheffy those questions you might have on risk and resilience. Um, the idea is, as in previous Hangout, we are going to start with this debrief, then you are going to move to the breakout session uh, for 15 minutes. This time, you know that we always are trying to, to, to include a, 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 an improvement and to do things a little bit better. So this time, we have with us our postdocs uh, in the team. They are going to join the breakout session in order to facilitate and moderate the discussion. So the idea is that all of you have the opportunity to share your opinion and help you also to identify these relevant questions before to come back to the lobby and share with us your, your questions and discuss with Professor Sheffy. So I hope you enjoyed the event today. Please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Velázquez, and thanks again. Uh, no, my pleasure. My pleasure, Eva. So, uh, well, good morning. It's really a great pleasure to be, to be here this morning. And if I understand correctly, you already have uh, the slides and uh, the materials and also the results of, of the game. So we, we had this game for, I think it was one week or two weeks actually open. Yes. And uh, well, the idea is to just introduce a little bit about the game and then uh, to show the results and some interesting insights and conclusions that you can take with this. So as, as Eva said, I'm a, a research associate and I lead the initiatives of, uh, of the Center for Latin America. And uh, let, well, if you can actually uh, have the presentation uh, open, you know, like showing the slides uh, with the animations or not, just let me know. I will try to, to lead you with the, with the number of, of the slides. So we are now actually in the slide number two. And this is actually the main, uh, uh, let's say, assumption of the game. You know, when we deal actually with general uh, variability in supply chain, usually we lead with uh, type of solutions that are related more into the concept of safety stock or, or trying to work with lead times or to try to work with forecast uh, tools. When we deal actually with the disruptions and, uh, and this uh, resilience in supply chain, uh, these things actually have very low probability of happening but once they happen, actually, this can destroy the supply chain the way that we, that we are used to, to manage. It's much more than just general volatility. It's, it's something that is really hard to predict. And that's why uh, we deal this with, this with a slightly different type of, uh, of mitigation strategy that I will try to elaborate a little bit more. So uh, just to, just to uh, make it very clear for you, we didn't give you any information about the type of disruptions that you could have in this screen game. But this is part of the of the of the of the tools or the or the conditions context of the game. You don't know this. Uh, the idea is that we are going to play the the role of a dictator. We are going to create just disruptions, and scenarios that we may believe this can happen. And then the idea is we are going to test uh, uh, your policies, how good they were under these conditions. So if we go uh, very fast to slide number three, 
we have uh, uh, the description of the screen game, right? So you were given uh, a very basic, simple supply chain with supplier plan and distribution center. And uh, the idea is that we are going to have disruptions in the either supplier, plan, distribution centers. And the idea is that you should design a robust mitigation strategy that aims at minimizing the total cost and at the same time uh, maximizing the order fill. And, uh, and the idea was to, uh, to give uh, a, a five code, uh, uh, five digit code in which you have uh, the inventory that you plan to keep in working process, in finished goods, and also the configuration of the type of, uh, of a strategy of backup, plan, distribution center, or uh, supplier you expect to get. Anyway, so if we move uh, just to slide four and five, we have some of the questions that we actually were expecting you will be asking before deciding your, your, your policy. Uh, you could actually just decide to go with the safety stock, which means not to do anything, right? Because clearly safety stock and backup inventory are different. The safety stock is for the general volatility of your supply chain. And the backup is specifically for, in, for, the, for the cases of these disruptions in, in supply chain. You could actually decide to have some backup inventory, either in working process or finished goods. Or you could have a combination, right? Like backup in facility, plant, distribution centers, suppliers, or combinations of all of these. So the idea is what, what is actually the best mix to be more resilient in case, in case you have a, a disruption in the supply chain. Um, again, you also have different alternatives. You can either decide to go for a, a, a strategy that protects you more in the supply, uh, other more in the plant, and other more in the distribution center. And the question is uh, also, you know, what could be like the best uh, way to, to have a better backup in case of disruptions in supply chain? Anyway, so if we go to uh, uh, slide number six, uh, this is just a general discussion on how we generally uh, decide uh, policies or, 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 or solutions in logistics or supply chain management. And usually what we do is that we follow the common approach of minimizing costs or maximizing return on investment or general approaches that are very single objective oriented. Right? So in, in this case, I'm showing just a, a dimension of cost and then we have two uh, mitigation strategies, one that is in the green circle and the other in the red circle. And then we say, well, what is the best mitigation strategy? And following this uh, common approach in operations management, we can always decide. I mean, hopefully you are also driving to the same conclusion of selecting the green circle, <laughs> which is the one that has the minimum cost. Right. So this is this is a very basic approach on supply chain management, but with this uh, actually is a tool that we use very commonly for many, many logistics decisions. But if we go now to slide number seven, and now imagine that we have exactly the same uh, policies, but now we have a disruption in the supply chain. And if we have a disruption, now it turns out that this uh, green circle uh, solution is actually, you know, the, the optimal cost, but it still is providing uh, the lowest service level. While the other solution that was much more expensive is providing a higher service level. Right? So we have these two extremes, and this happens because we have a disruption in the supply chain. And uh, the interesting part of this is that uh, if we actually uh, have a situation of not having any disruption in the supply chain, both solutions are providing exactly the same service level, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, but once we have a, a disruption, then it's when we start assessing the differences between these two strategies. And uh, the, the idea of this is that if, in case we don't have any, any disruption, then actually that one that was very expensive can put us out of business. And in the case we have a, 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 a disruption, actually the other one that didn't, didn't have any investment in cost could put us out of business as well. And this is the main reflection of this. When we make a decision on supply chain uh, uh, management, particularly in the case of disruptions, uh, we are actually expecting to do an investment that maybe uh, we will not get back never. It's like thinking in the return investment of a health insurance. We pay for the health insurance, but we expect not to use it never. Right? So if we go now to the slide number eight, uh, we actually come up with a general idea of this trade-off uh, between service level and cost, uh, which means we can actually get more solution than just these extreme points of trying to find the best solution from, from the case of service level and the best solution in the case of cost. So getting all these other solutions uh, can actually uh, solve the problem. And uh, among these solutions, we can actually find those solutions that are actually in this uh, front you know, the front of the, of the efficient set uh, of solutions that are uh, dominating the rest of the solutions, right? So if we see the solutions that are actually in the, in the red circle, uh, we observe that these solutions 
uh, are dominating the rest, but at the same time, we cannot distinguish which one is, is, is better than the other, right? While one, for instance, the, the, the green one, is the best in terms of cost, I can find another one that is maybe not as, as good in cost like the green one, but is, is better in service level. Mm -hmm. And then we can find the other that actually is better in, in the same terms until we go completely to the other side of the, of the Pareto front, which is a solution that is the best in service level. And to decide which one is the best between them is not an easy task, right? But just finding solutions that are in, in that set, then, the, then we are getting closer to finding a better mitigation strategy. So, uh, well, in general, uh, if we go just to slide 9 and 10, uh, we get the concept of robustness in a system. So we are trying to find a mitigation strategy that can actually cope with different potential uh, disruptions or scenarios, right? And if we find a solution that most of the cases uh, belongs uh, very close to the Pareto front for different scenarios, this is a robust solution. It's, it's able to actually uh, deal with a variety of potential disruptions and thus has a high ability to tolerate these perturbations, right? And uh, in, in slide number 10, we have an example of this. Uh, we have, this is just example, so imagine that we have three different disruptions that are in these scenarios. And, and in the first scenario, we get a Pareto front uh, with solutions A, B, C, and D, right? So all of them are the best solutions we, we found for this case. And then we go to scenario two, and then we get A, B, G, and H. And then in the, in the third scenario, A, F, G, H. So by watching these uh, 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 different uh, results for these hypothetical scenarios, we can uh, argue at the end or conclude that uh, this policy A is a robust solution because actually in these three scenarios belong in the part of the front. So uh, uh, then if we go to slide number 11, I can show you uh, the scenarios that we use for the screen game. So these scenarios were uh, created based on, the, on, on previous disruptions we observe in supply chain. And in general, uh, if you observe, for instance, scenario one in this table, is the scenario in which we don't have any disruption, which means we start a disruption in week one with a duration of zero, and we are ready to be online in the first week. So nothing happened in the distribution center plan and the supplier. But if we go, for instance, to maybe the scenario five, in scenario five, we can observe, for instance, that we have a disruption in distribution center that will start in the week 12. We'll last for 36 weeks, and then we will be ready in the week 48. And then we have scenarios like this for disruptions in distribution centers, in plants and supplies. And then we created this new concept of, uh, of uh, well, we name it also like scenarios, right? For instance, the sunny day. So a sunny day scenario is which we have the probability of 100% having the scenario number one which means nothing will happen. If we have, for instance, another scenario that is even probability, then this considers 10% for all the previous scenarios that I'm just showing in that slide. And then we created combinations like this, and using these new scenarios, uh, we assess the best policy, looking for those policies that, are, that belong most of the time in the Pareto front. So I hope this is, this is, this is quite clear. So if we go now to, to the slide number 12, uh, then actually we build uh, this uh, like framework to make the assessment, right? So if we take again the, the red circle in the left, we get the optimal cost solution with actually the lowest service level, and in the other extreme, we get the highest cost solution with the minimum, with the maximum amount of service level. And then if this is just a line, just a curve that is actually uh, showing uh, an estimation of the Pareto front. Also, we know that in this case, uh, this. Area uh, or this curve is actually non-convex. This is just an approximate, approximation, just to show how how it might look. And then uh, we can actually draw a line. You know, in the in the uh, in the vertical axis, when we have the uh, the service level, we can draw a line of saying, well, you know, I will not accept any mitigation policy that provides less less than 90 or 95 percent of, of of field rate, for instance. And we can actually name, later draw another line that is in the uh, uh, horizontal axis for the cost to say, well, this is a line of the average cost. So if I have a policy that provides higher cost than this, then I'm not interested in that policy. And then later I can also draw another line, you know, a line that goes between the minimum cost and then the average uh, cost, you know, this red line. And this one just distinguishes those solutions that are going to be closer to the priority front. So those solutions are actually very good solutions because are providing for a fair amount of cost 
a good uh, level of, of, of service uh, for this case. And then we can actually distinguish the different areas now. We have those that are in the, in the red circles. It is like a clear red circle. Uh, in which we are not interested in those uh, policies, right? For instance, the one that is in the in the left-hand side uh, is more like the greedy approach, right? So we don't want uh, we we don't want to invest a lot of money uh, because we are following like the traditional approach of operations management of looking for solutions that minimize cost, and then we get very low service level. And if we go to the other circle, the other uh, square that is uh, uh, in the right-hand side, then actually the other approach, right? Like, like saying, well, you know, I care a lot about service level that I don't care about investing all the money that I need. You know, I put a lot of money and, and I'm very protecting myself, you know, with very conservative approach. And then of course the other, that is the darker uh, red circle, uh, square, I'm sorry. If you are in this area, uh, you may be looking maybe for another profession, right? Because uh, you're, you're investing a lot of money and you're getting very low service, service level, right? But then the, the other solutions that are in the blue and green area, uh, are actually smart solutions, right? Those that are in the green area are very close to the Pareto front, and uh, and those that are in the blue are also fair, you know, for the amount of money you invest, getting sufficient amount of of service level. So what we did actually with your uh, with your policies was to uh, count how many times you were either in the red area, in the blue area, or in the green area, and we 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 we, we give uh, well if you are in the green area we we'll give you one point if you I'm sorry two points. If you're in the blue area, we give you one point, and if you are in the red circle, uh, you're zero points, right? Because this is not there are not the solutions that we are interested in. So uh, let me just go very fast uh, for the for the results, right? So if you go uh, in slides 14 and 15, you can see the list of participants. So I expect to uh, to have all your names or the EDX ID names uh, there, so you can find yourself, and uh, we are we are assigning a specific number, so you can actually use this number to find uh, in the charts, how, how do you do, right? Uh, so let me just show you some, some charts uh, as an example. So we have in, in slide number 16, the slide is sunny scenario. And then in the, in the blue line, you can see the Pareto front. So actually this Pareto front actually is not, uh, it's not complex as I mentioned before. And then we can see the rest of the participants, you know, their, their policies, how they, how they did, you know, and in which uh, area they, they, they lie. And uh, well, in this case, we see some solutions very close to the green area, the blue area, and others that are in the red area, right? If we go, for instance, to the other, the one that I just mentioned before, even probability. In even probability, again, uh, we, we get some solutions, and we have one solution that actually belongs to the, to the circle, right? But it's interesting that uh, in these 16 and 17 slides, we observe, for instance, the, the circle, the blue circle, that is actually the, uh, the uh, number 12 participant, is very conservative, right? So he's investing or she's investing a lot of money to keep very high service level, right? And then on the other side, we have uh, the other uh, optimal cost solution, which is like a Pentagon, or what is that? I think so, which is a 47, right, solution. So anyway, just to show you another one, uh, when we get the uh, DC down long term, so this scenario considers uh, uh, getting for like 36 uh, weeks uh, of shutdown of the distribution center. And in this case, again, we get solutions that actually are not very uh, resilient, let's say it. And we get more solutions that are now uh, in the red circle, right? So anyway, uh, I will go now to the slide number 19 and just to show you the winners. So in the winners, we have all those teams that actually got very good scores. You know, uh, practically in all the uh, scenarios, uh, their solutions were in the, in the green set. So they got actually all the possible points. And, uh, and interesting also to observe the differences. For instance, if we go for the uh, 36 uh, uh, team or participant, actually uh, the, the backup policy, just check out the, the, the configuration. It's 666, six, six, right? But if we go, for instance, to the number 30, Actually, it's five, three, seven, and uh, and it's it's quite interesting how uh, by having different configurations you may get actually uh, a similar results in terms of how robust is your solution for a for a for a mitigation uh, problem for a supply chain risk management problem. So anyway, so let me just conclude uh, by showing some observation of the of the screen game, uh, and I'm sure that you learn a lot 
uh, following the, the course of Professor Sheffi uh, on, on resilience and general, we know that actually different policies perform better uh, different in different scenarios. And it's always better to get a combination of redundancy and flexibility, right? Which means to have also inventory, but at the same time also to have backup facilities and distribution centers. And uh, we, in this case, we just created the scenarios, as I said, playing the role of a dictator. But uh, this actually is an informed process. And uh, well, now that Professor Sheffield will take over uh, the Hangout, uh, he's going to talk also of potential things that may happen in, 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 the, in different supply chains and, and in the world, right? And it's important to be informed on this and to be prepared for this. Some of the uh, key learnings come in the, in the slide number 21. And just keep in mind that uh, nobody gets credit for solving problems that didn't happen. Right? So this is also part of, uh, of resilience, to be prepared for something that has very low probability of happening, but actually they happen. Right? And, uh, and just keep in mind also that it's always better to, in general, right, to, to be prepared and to, to have backups for uh, uh, the entity of the supply chain that is uh, closer to your customers. Right? Because if that disruption occurs in the distribution center, usually you are affected immediately. And, uh, and, and usually you should be careful in that. Anyway, so with that, uh, I say goodbye, Eva. Mm -hmm. So it was very nice being with you. And uh, now I leave you with, uh, with Professor Sheffi. And if you have any questions, at the end of the slide, you can find my, my email. It's the, it's the toughest email ever in MIT, josue at mit.edu. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to be with you. Dr. Velázquez, thank you so much, Josue. It's a pleasure. I'm very happy to, to offer our SEX student this innovative and interactive tool. I think th this is something that they really much appreciate, some tool that they can interact, they can include their, their decisions, and thanks also for this debrief and to analyze the results with them. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. And now we are going to uh, start with the second right. part of the Hangout. So it's my pleasure to have here today Professor Sheffi with us. Professor Sheffi is the director of the Center for Transportation and Logistics, and he's an expert in risk and resilience. So he has a lot of experience with different industry, many companies. Um, I hope you are going to take advantage to have today uh, Professor Sheffi with us in order to ask him those questions, uh, those questions regarding to risk, to resilience, that you want him to discuss with you. Thanks, Professor Sheffi, for joining Hello. us today. Nice to be here. <laughs> Perfect. So first thing we are going to do is uh, we already shared with you three uh, articles. One is related to Samsung Note uh, Galaxy, Note 7. Uh, the second one was the Hanjin case. And the third one is the Brexit. So this is just three ideas to uh, start the discussion. So we want you now to move to the breakout session to discuss with your peers. We are going also to have our postdoc uh, moderating the breakout session and um, after 15 minutes please come back to the to the lobby come back to the chat share with us your questions and those topics that you want to have professor Sheffi thoughts on on these topics and we will be very happy to discuss with you thank you okay <laughs>